Hello, my name is Bob Hartzell from Comprehensive Environmental. The purpose of this presentation is to discuss results from a planning grant that the Town of Hadley received to perform a climate change resiliency assessment with funding from the Massachusetts Municipal Vulnerability Program, also known as the MVP program. Public feedback is encouraged. Contact information will be provided at the end of the presentation. Files from this presentation can be found on the Town of Hadley website. This presentation will last for approximately 25 minutes and will provide an overview of the MVP program, climate change projections for Hadley, a summary of planning grant results, and next steps. The MVP grant program provides support for cities and towns in Massachusetts to begin the process of climate change resiliency planning and implementing priority projects. The state awards communities with funding to complete vulnerability assessments and to develop action-oriented resiliency plans. Communities who complete the MVP program will be certified as an MVP community and are elig eligible for action grant funding and other opportunities. The MVP program is funded by the 2018 Environmental Bond Bill, which included over $200 million for climate change adaptation. The MVP program steps are to first obtain a planning grant, second, to complete a planning workshop and write up the summary of findings, and last, to become a certified MVP community and then become eligible for grant funding to implement climate resiliency actions identified during the planning workshop. Over the last three years, almost three quarters of the state has participated in the MVP program. Total funding for the program has exceeded $17 million to date. The most recent action grant application round in the fall of 2019 funded over 50 projects throughout the state for a total of over $10 million. The MVP program funds many project types designed to increase climate change resiliency. The most common types of projects are uh, conducting more detailed vulnerability assessments, redesigns and retrofits of existing infrastructure structures such as culverts to pass larger flood flows, and nature-based solutions for flood protection, drought mitigation, and water quality improvements. There are many other eligible project types. For example, the program was expanded in 2019 to include energy resiliency projects, such as the implementation of solar panels on the roofs of public buildings to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Over the last 50 to 100 years, the Massachusetts climate has been changing. We've seen increases in temperature and the associated growing season, and also increases in sea level and heavy precipitation events. For example, the average temperature across the state has increased by almost three degrees Fahrenheit since 1895. Climate projections for Massachusetts can be found at resilientma.org. This website provides interactive tools to enable data exploration. Based on these projections, it's expected that the average temperature and rainfall may continue to significantly increase in Hampshire County. For example, the average temperature is expected to increase by 9 degrees Fahrenheit by the year 2100, and ra rainfall is expected to increase by 7 inches per year. To put these climate projections into perspective, this figure shows the projected Massachusetts climate based on several climate change scenarios. Under worst case conditions, the average temperature of Massachusetts could be similar to South Carolina by the year 2100. A lower greenhouse gas emission scenario projects temperatures that are similar to Delaware. As indicated by this figure, average temperatures have already shifted from 1990 to present. The potential consequences of climate change are widespread. These may include increases in flooding, health-related pests such as ticks and mosquitoes on the rise, and more frequent extreme weather events. One key piece of the town's MVP planning grant was to hold a climate resiliency planning workshop. The goal of the workshop was to have community stakeholders work collaboratively to complete a climate change and natural hazard vulnerability assessment and develop prioritized actions to address vulnerabilities and improve strengths. 
The three main categories that were looked at during the workshop were infrastructure, social impacts, and environmental impacts of climate change. The workshop was based on the Community Resiliency Building Guide developed by the Nature Conservancy. More information on this program can be found at communityresiliencebuilding.com. The workshop was broken into three primary guided exercises to first identify the town's top hazards, such as flooding, to identify strengths and concerns, such as undersized pipes and infrastructure, and lastly, to identify specific actions to address these concerns. Hadley's MVP workshop was held on December 5th, 2019. Town efforts in planning for the workshop were led by a core team as listed here. The workshop was attended by 14 stakeholders and was coordinated by Chris Okafor, Hadley's DPW director. Attendees were split into two groups for a series of group planning exercises. The groups were facilitated by staff from Comprehensive Environmental. The first exercise was to identify the town's top climate related hazards. The town selected flooding, strong storms and drought as Hadley's top three climate hazards. Strong storms include a variety of storms, such as rain, snow, high winds, and ice storms. This slide depicts a completed risk matrix that was completed by the workshop groups. The risk matrix was typed up following the workshop. These are the different components of the risk matrix that were used to complete the exercises. As an overall group, the workshop participants first identified Hadley's top three hazards, flooding, drought, and strong storms. Each group then identified concerns and strengths based on three categories, infrastructure, societal, and environmental. Finally, each group identified and ranked potential actions that could be implemented to reinforce strengths and to address concerns. The final exercise of the workshop was for the overall group to vote on the top three actions for future implementation in Hadley. So let's talk about the top concerns that were identified in the category of infrastructure. First, stormwater infrastructure. Participants of the workshop identified the following, undersized and aging culverts that led to frequent road flooding during major storm events. Agricultural ditches throughout the town required ongoing maintenance in order to allow flood flows to pass. Many of these are on private property and require easements to allow maintenance. Lastly, leaching catch basins installed uh, in poorly drained soils were a concern as they contribute to flooding. Next, the Hadley Dyke. Multiple sections of the Hadley Dyke require repair and many of these sections are on private property that cannot currently be accessed by the town uh, for repairs. Uh, also, the Hadley Dyke does not currently provide flood mitigation for areas northeast of Bay Road. Next, water supply. The town's water treatment plant is located within the Fort River floodplain, which makes it vulnerable to outages caused by uh, current and future storms. Also, the water main on South Maple Street has inadequate capacity for fire control, particularly during uh, drought events or periods of low rainfall. And lastly, the wastewater treatment plant. The wastewater treatment plant is located in a zone two drinking water protection zone, and it has potential contamination risks uh, due to increased flooding. The next category are societal concerns related to climate change. Workshop participants first identified that uh, there were concerns related to bylaw enforcement in wetlands and floodplains, and that uh, frequently development projects in these areas got waivers. Also a concern was flood isolation uh, on major transportation corridors, specifically Route 47, Route 9, and the Calvin Coolidge Cool 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 Bridge. Undersized infrastructure in these areas were noted. Vulnerable communities. Senior citizens and low-income populations may not have adequate access to code red alerts 
which alert citizens to uh, emergency situations and what they should do. Also noted was the uh, lack of air conditioning in some facilities. Also, the town safety complex is located in a floodplain, and during extreme flooding events, that may limit the um, response times and the access of certain communities to uh, emergency services. Agricultural drought irrigation. The long-term viability of Hadley's farms could be at risk without a reliable irrigation source for future droughts. And lastly, seasonal campsite use of the Connecticut River banks. The workshop identified that there were approximately 100 unpermitted campsites in the vicinity of Sandy Beach on the southern bank of the Connecticut River. Concerns related to the environment included forest and wetland management. Brush fires on conservation land near Chimura Road were noted, as well as an increase in risks associated with invasive pests, both for forests and crops. Land conservation and habitat protection, roughly one third of Hadley is rare species habitat or supporting landscape for these rare species, especially in the northern and southern boundaries of the town. Also, many private parcels within the Connecticut River floodplain uh, are important to protect the long-term function of the flood, flood, floodplain and should be protected accordingly. With regard to water quality, Lake Warner's nutrient impairments and algal blooms were noted. And with regard to air quality and dust, the lack of cover crops on fallow fields can cause air quality and dust issues during dry periods and drought. The top strengths of the town included emergency services. The town has an excellent response track record and interdepartment co coordination. Conservation areas. The town currently has over 2,500 acres of town or state conservation land and open space and 3,300 acres of protected farmland. Local partnerships. The town has good past regional planning coordination with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and other Pioneer Valley communities. Also noted was uh, the University of Massachusetts Amherst as an important source of public education and outreach. So now let's talk about the top recommended actions as prioritized by the workshop. The first was the Hadley Dyke. The problem here, as previously mentioned, is that multiple sections require repair. Some sections are on private property and not accessible for repairs, and the dike currently does not provide flood mitigation northeast of Bay Road. The solution would be for the town to obtain permanent easements for repairs and maintenance, and also to conduct a study uh, to assess the uh, extension of the dike north of Bay Road. Number two, stormwater infrastructure. The first recommendation is to assess the town's infrastructure, expand on a previous study to include a comprehensive resiliency assessment, town drainage infrastructure, and to prioritize recommendations for repairs and replacements. Maintenance, the town should obtain approvals, including easements to maintain key stormwater infrastructure. And lastly, to replace key culverts. This will require an engineering feasibility analysis, permitting, engineering design, and construction. And the third top recommendation was related to unpermitted campsites along the Connecticut River banks. The town should assess alternative safe locations for a seasonal population that are safe from floods, legal, and without environmental impacts. This will require establishing an interdepartmental committee to collaborate with area landowners, migrant farm worker representatives, and other community stakeholders. The goal will be to develop equitable solutions that prevent further environmental damages without displacing socially vulnerable populations in Hadley. Other high priority actions that were identified. The town water treatment plant and wastewater treatment plant are in the Fort River floodplain, making them vulnerable to flood impacts. The town should assess potential flood proofing measures at these facilities and also assess the Mount Warner wells as an alternative water source. This will include pump testing, water quality testing, conceptual designs, and treatment piloting. The town should consider replacing the South Maple Street water main, approximately 10,000 linear feet, uh, to accommodate fire control flows. That will include engineering, permitting, and construction. 
the town's wastewater treatment plant, which is located in a Zone 2 water protection area. The town should conduct a study to assess potential water quality impacts. And lastly, the town should develop an interdepartmental emergency communication plan to ensure that all departments are working in sync when an emergency uh, takes place. Next steps. Now that the climate resiliency plan is completed, uh, Hadley should get municipal vulnerability community designation, implement top priority recommendations, and then once that takes place, apply for action grant funding. The next round of funding is anticipated to be available in late April 2020. So that concludes the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness presentation. We would appreciate your feedback. A copy of the final project report and these slides can be found on the Town of Hadley website. Please reach out to either of the contacts shown here or provide feedback on this presentation um, by uh, clicking the link to the online survey shown on this slide. We will compile and include feedback as an appendix to the final report. Thank you.